Hi, everyone. Let's see. Rach, can you talk for me for a second, unmuted? Muted. Oh, there you go. There now you go. can talk. I can speak now. Can you hear me? Okay, perfect. Hang on. Okay. I'm trying to get you guys in my ears, and for some reason, I can't hear you. You want me to keep talking? Will that be helpful? That would be very helpful. <laughs> well, it's weird, because I can hear time. you. Uh, Oh, you know what? I think I might know. You, you'd think after like 6,000 of these uh, Zoom calls, we'd have it figured out by now. No. But uh, yeah. Okay, now talk. Um, can you hear me now? Yes, I can. Thank you very much. All right, let's keep uh, admitting more people. Good, good, good. <laughs> this is awesome. I got a couple more coming through. All right, good. Okay, well, we'll get started, but first of all, thank you guys for hopping on the call. I appreciate it. Um, I'm going to jump into speaker view. I'm going to mute you, uh, Rachel, and then I think, hopefully, trying to get... All right, there we go. Now I'm on. <clears throat> All right, well, thank you guys for uh, jumping on. I appreciate it. This is going to be a lot of fun. Um, there, I was super surprised when I sent out the original survey. Um, we had like over 70 people respond that they want to do this. So I'm, I'm really excited. Um, you know, obviously a lot of kids are getting super burnt out on all the online education, as I know some of the teachers who are on the call can definitely attest to. Um, but I started thinking more and more and I just started realizing, you know, ice time in and of itself is really limited for adults. And a lot of times what people are doing, 90% of the time that they're on and they're learning how to play is just learning how to skate. But there's so many other aspects to it. Um, and so I really think that this is a great opportunity to try something new and allow adults to learn in the comfort of their homes. And um, I'm really excited to, to give it a run and I think it's gonna be a ton of fun. So I'm gonna share, I just put together a small PowerPoint just so people can go back and watch it and have everything in one place. Um, but I'm gonna go through it, just kind of explain what the plan is for the program. Um, and then at the end, I really want to one answer questions, but then I also really want to get your guys' feedback. This is a brand new program, so I'm kind of relying on you guys to help drive it and help me deliver um, the best experience possible for you guys. So um, let me share my presentation here. All right, let's go into present. Awesome. Thumbs up. Can everybody see this? Good. Cool. Okay. Um, so like I said, my goals with this program is one, I wanted to create a safe space for adults to learn. Um, just like kids get nervous going out on the ice for the first time, I feel like adults are often even more nervous to go out on the ice for the first time because kids don't necessarily uh, understand risk of injury like adults do. Um, so I want to definitely have, have a safe space for, for adults to be able to learn from the comfort of their home. Um, improving skills, even if you've already learned how to skate, like I said, a lot of times you're just learning how to skate. 
And so when you're on the ice, you don't really get to spend a lot of time doing the other things like learning how to stick handle, learning how to improve your shot, um, and some of the other things that we're going to work on. If you've never been on the ice before, or if you've only been on the ice a couple times at public skate, um, I really want this to be an opportunity to help build your confidence off the ice so that you can make that transition on the ice with whatever um, adult program you have in your local market. Um, I also, this is something that I'm really passionate about is helping people build strength. So everybody has different levels of fitness, um, but there are definitely adults who maybe haven't done a squat in a really long time who maybe haven't done any conditioning in a really long time, and that's totally okay. Um, I wanna make sure that everybody's able to get on the ice and feel strong on their skates and feel comfortable in a good hockey position because the reality is when you're skating for an hour or however long, your knees are bent pretty much the whole time. So we wanna make sure everybody's nice and strong so we can be safe on the ice. And then of course, we're gonna have a ton of fun. Um, I've been doing some in-person adult programs that I think some of you have been to um, throughout the country and they are one of my favorite programs to run because um, adults are just awesome. Everybody, everybody listens, which is great. Um, everybody's there because they want to be there and they want to learn. Uh, so I think we're going to have an absolute blast with this. So how will this actually work and how will it look? So it's not just going to be a boring old Zoom call. So I don't know if any of you have really seen um, a, a super dynamic Zoom call using Wirecast, but it's really cool. It's like a live produced show. And some of the stuff that I'm gonna be able to do is have multiple camera angles. Um, and that's really gonna help with being able to kind of highlight different things that I'm demoing. So I'll be able to have a full body camera view so you can see me teaching uh, if I want to zoom in on my hands so you can really see what I'm doing with my wrists, uh, I'll be able to switch the camera angle so you can see that. And then if you want to see the camera angle down at my stick or at the puck, you'll be able to see that as well. So it's going to be a really different learning experience than just kind of a static uh, Zoom call. Uh, it's going to be, we're going to do two live lessons a week. Um, I'll get to the times on those a little later on. Uh, there'll be live lessons and then there'll also be recorded stuff. So I kind of took everything from the survey, um, kind of said, all right, what are the things that people across the board really want to learn? Things like stick handling and shooting. Let's integrate those into the live lessons. And then some of the other stuff that people have questions about, um, we'll do more of a recorded style lesson. So, <clears throat> um, Part of what I can do with Wirecast is I can uh, do like live countdown clocks. So we're gonna be doing a lot of, you know, hands-on, take it slow, kind of break down whatever drill it is we're doing. And then we'll be able to have everybody going like you would in a normal practice, doing the drill for 30 seconds, doing the drill for 45 seconds. What's gonna be really cool about that is I'm actually gonna be able to, instead of standing there doing it with you, I'm gonna be able to take a second and go through and actually watch you guys doing it. And my hope is similar with uh, doing on ice clinics, where if you know somebody's maybe not rolling their wrist properly or somebody's not holding their stick properly, um, I'll be able to give that live feedback. It might be a little different because it is on Zoom, but my hope will be with that to be able to watch you guys as we're doing those drills, um, keeping up the energy, keeping up the pace. Uh, my hope is to be able to actually give you guys live feedback. I'll be able to see your names. I can kind of call out so-and-so, you know, work on uh, keeping your knees bent, whatever it is. Um, if you are someone who doesn't feel comfortable having your camera on, that's 100% fine. Just know you're not going to be able to get that live feedback, but I will not hold it against you if you don't want to have your camera on. Um, let me make sure. Okay. So at the end of every session, I do want to open up uh, for some Q&A. So if, you know, at the end of the lesson, you have this like burning question about, hey, can you just dig a little deeper on whatever concept? I can walk through that with everybody who wants to stick around for that last five minutes. Um, and it's just a great way, I, I hope, to make sure that 
Um, everybody's getting the most out of it that we possibly can. Everything will be recorded. So if for whatever reason you can't make it on for the live lesson, no big deal. Um, we're gonna have a private YouTube channel that only members will be able to access. And you can go back and watch any of those lessons. Um, even if maybe we did something the previous week that you wanna just work on a little bit more, um, you'll be able to have access to everything that we do. Uh, we are going to repeat concepts a lot. So I'm a big believer, especially for beginners, that repetition is absolutely key. So um, we'll definitely be coming back to things frequently. Uh, and really my goal with this is, as much as I'd love everybody to be a part of this forever, um, if, it, if everything starts to become way too easy and you decide, you know what, I'm not getting any value out of this anymore, um, if you decide to end your subscription after three months or three years uh, because things have become too easy, I'll consider that a success because I've done my job and you've improved and gotten better and gotten to a place where you're ready to advance to the next level. Um, if we have 30 people who are ready to advance, then maybe we'll make a uh, additional program that'll be a level up. But for right now, I'm, I'm keeping this purely beginner. <clears throat> So kind of like I mentioned earlier, um, the focus of the sessions are going to be uh, for the live lessons, the four most popular ones were um, stick handling, shooting, leg strengthening and conditioning. Now, my plan is to kind of integrate all of these um, into every live lesson. So it's not like we're just going to be doing a full blown leg workout for an hour. Um, everything will be kind of mixed in together. It's going to be super high energy, super high paced. Um, we're not going to stay on one thing for, you know, an entire hour. We're going to really mix it up and hopefully keep everybody really engaged. Um, these are just a couple of the different topics for the recorded lessons that I put in the survey. Um, so mental performance, nutrition, hockey IQ, and rules. If you're a total beginner and don't feel comfortable with the rules of hockey, that's totally fine. Um, I can make tutorials on that that you guys can learn from. And then any other random topics you guys have, um, I'll create, whether it's you know a, a process where you guys can email me or maybe I can create an online form, whatever it is. Um, I do want, if you guys have some sort of topic request, request I do want to uh, be able to make additional videos for you guys and provide as much value as I possibly can. So start date. So my hope is to uh, get going on the week of June 15th. I'm planning right now on Wednesday nights um, at 6 p.m. Pacific time. It is weird because uh, I and a number of other people on this call are in Arizona. So our time zone never changes. So whenever, I, I don't even remember when uh, daylight savings and all that changes, but uh, I will make sure that we adjust accordingly being the only state that doesn't shift. Um, Saturday, I'm also going to do a live lesson. Um, I'm, I think because Saturdays are pretty fluid, I'm gonna send out um, an additional survey to everybody to get an idea of whether we should do morning, uh, mid-afternoon, or in the evening. Um, the June two weeks, so the 15th through the 30th, those two weeks are gonna be completely free. That's an opportunity for everybody to try it out see how they like it, um, hopefully everybody enjoys it. And then after June, it's gonna be a subscription for 20 bucks a month, um, which seemed to be kind of the sweet spot based on the survey. So you're all wondering, when can I sign up? Um, so my target launch date for sign up is June 5th. Uh, I'm working with uh, the company to get all the subscription stuff in order. Um, but that is the, the plan and I'll obviously send out an email once that's open um, and also make sure to include it in the newsletters. So that's pretty much all I have, um, but I really want to open this up to questions, comments, concerns, everything that you guys have um, so that we can really build something special and uh, I want your guys' feedback in any way I can get it. So. With that, I'm going to stop sharing and come back here. All right, and if you have a question, you can, there should be a little reaction bar at the bottom of your Zoom. If you don't have it, you can just hold up your hand. Yeah, Rachel, go ahead. 
So when we're all working out together, we're going to be able to see you for sure. And you're going to be able to see us. Are we going to be able to see each other? That's a really good question. Um, Does anybody have any? Yeah, I'm curious. What ideas on that is that's a that's a good. I mean, I watch um, I watch the girls work out, and granted, they're nine to fourteen year olds, but um, I don't know if working out together is distracting or not distracting. Um, it's all pretty new to me, so. Well, anybody... you can. The problem is, is if I put it in webinar mode, I can't see you guys. So we kind of lose the live feedback. But um, if you guys have it in speaker mode, you should, for the most part, only be able to see me. Um, I think it's more of an issue, like if you feel uncomfortable being seen by others, in that scenario, you may just have to black out your screen and be okay not getting the live feedback. But does anybody else have a, a thought or a comment on that? I will say I've been taking body prep classes like over Zoom and you're so concentrated on what you're doing. You're not looking at what everyone else is doing. You're just focused on the teacher trying to pick up the next move that, and I don't think, I don't know. I don't, I, hopefully no one would judge anyone else. Like we're all here trying to do the same thing and we're trying to be positive and encourage each other. So I don't know. That's my two cents. I think I think in your mind you get, you're like, oh my gosh, who's watching me? And the answer is nobody. Everyone's just trying to like stay on top of themselves, you know? There will, there will be a no bullying policy for sure in the uh, adult program. <laughs> and it's, so, yeah. it's for, it's for men and women, right? Yes. Because totally I've been inviting everybody. Okay. <laughs> All right. Good. All right. Uh, Jaina? It's uh, Jana. Hi. Jana, sorry. <laughs> That's okay. I'm used to it. Um, my question is uh, for the drills and, and whatnot, do we, do you recommend being on skates? Because I have like some of the, the fake ice or whatever downstairs for my kids. So should I be on skates if I can be? Is that better? That's a really interesting question. Um, I'm gonna say if you want to be, you can absolutely be for uh, any of the stick handling stuff. And actually, that reminds me that I definitely should have included like an equipment needed slide. Um, my my hope is really that all not my hope, all I'm really gonna ask of people is that they have um, something to stick handle on. So whether that's synthetic ice or just a stick handling pad, um, pucks, and a net, so that we can do stick handling and shooting. Um, I was thinking of doing some optional like inline skating stuff. How much synthetic ice do you have? It's like like eight by nine tiles. Okay. So it's a okay. decent amount, but it's not huge. Right. I mean, I, I don't think there's any harm in it for sure because uh, <laughs> learning how to just like stand and balance on your skates while doing stick handling and shooting is super important. So um, if you have it, I would say absolutely go for it. Okay. All right. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, let's see. All right. That's my Lisa? kid shower behind us. <laughs> <laughs> that's okay. That's awesome. You actually answered my question. It was about equipment. Oh, okay. Good. 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 Yeah. And I'll, I'll send that out when I uh, send the follow-up yeah, um, for this. You recommend regular pucks or, or green biscuits or like for that, just for yeah, the stick handling? That's a good question. So, um, it really depends. So if you, you can, if you use like the green biscuit, the, the sniper ones that you're able to shoot, um, it would theoretically eliminate the need for like a stick handling pad. Um, I, I still think that having an actual like pad with real pucks will be the most beneficial because it's going to simulate um, being on the ice the most, but if, if you don't have the stick handling pad and all you have is a net and a green biscuit, um, and some concrete, you'll, you'll be okay. I, doesn't matter either way, either one works. I would do, I would do the pad and a regular puck then. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Sounds good. And more than one puck, I presume? Yeah. Make sure you have a couple just so you're not chasing all of them. All but right. I'll, I'll send out a more detailed list. That's, that's a good reminder. Thank you.
Any suggestions or does everything just look perfect and you're ready to start tomorrow? <laughs> I'm excited. It looks awesome. Good. I know. Good. I'm really excited. I think like I've seen my kids do online um, some hockey training and I, I think like I can sit there and do their drills and, and get something out of it, but they're not going into like the detail of how you actually need to like have this, like the stick contact the puck and what angle. I mean, it's like, I need a little bit more detail. I think they assume, you know, a lot of that because the kids all have been doing it a while. Right. And so, um, yeah, I guess it, I, for me, I would need it broken down like to really <laughs> like simple steps. Well, which is, is good. And I think, I mean, I've got some parents on here whose kids I coach. I think I do a fairly good job of making it really breaking it down, keeping it simple. Um, and yeah, we'll, we'll definitely do that. And that's why, you know, I really wanted to target beginners versus targeting just all adults as a whole, because I think like adult programs are so limited that often what ends up happening is you get the people who have literally never stood on skates before. And then the people who maybe haven't skated since they were kids, but like they know how to play. So you get this like really wide range. Um, I really want this to be for people who um, haven't been playing very much, um, have maybe have never stepped on the ice before. So uh, we'll definitely, we'll definitely break it down. Um, I'd really, um, one of my goals is really just to be able to use that little, um, that little rink outside of Oceanside and do some floor go. hockey while the kids are inside because I'm tired of watching the kids play. Although right now I'm not. Right now I'm missing hockey. Um, <laughs> it would be a lot of fun to get the moms out there playing and dads out there playing. Sorry, man. I would, I would love that. Maybe I'll do check-in and then I'll skip out and go play with you guys. Uh, Kristen. Sorry, my dogs were fighting, so I'm staying. <laughs> um, I want to be able to invite, I've got at least four other women that I'd like to be able to invite to this. So is there something that you can maybe email that I can forward to them or? Sure. That'd I be great. will definitely send something out. And then I think you answered my other question, so we're good. And uh, I apologize. I, I'm, <laughs> I'm so used to having like our Arizona group of people that I realized I didn't actually introduce myself. Um, so any of you who I have never met before, who have I never met in person before? Awesome. Jana. I think you've been up here before though. Have you been Where are you at? Whitefish, Montana. Oh yes. I love Whitefish. Yeah. I'm so excited. I can't wait to, uh, to get back there. I'm hoping to get there in August. Um, yeah, that's what I'm hoping too. <laughs> yeah, fingers, crossed. <laughs> fingers crossed. Fingers um, crossed. Yeah, so I'm, I'm Lindsay and we just had a couple additional people jump on the call, but um, I am located in Arizona. Like I said earlier, I run um, our girls program here that a couple of our parents of those kids are on. Um, I was fortunate enough to grow up here in Arizona for the most part. Um, I played boys hockey until I was in high school and I left to go play girls hockey in Colorado. Um, and then was fortunate to go on and play for Harvard for four years and then played on the Olympic team in 2014 for team USA. So, um, I've had a really fun, crazy hockey journey. And now I just love uh, coaching. I love coaching the kids. I love coaching the adults. Um, and I think one of the, the best things that has come out of the craziness of the pandemic is it's really forced a lot of people to innovate. Um, so I'm, I'm excited about this because I probably never would have done this if uh, we hadn't been in this situation. But like I said, the response has been incredible. So um, I think it's going to be just a really great opportunity to access more people from around the country who I otherwise wouldn't get to work with. So um, I am curious, can we just, for my sake, um, even the Arizona people, can we just kind of go around and say where everybody's from? So I'm going to go in order of my screen. So Rachel, will you go first? There you go. I'm in Scottsdale and my daughter plays for the Kachinas. My son plays hockey and uh, 
I don't know if you really wanted us to go into this much detail, but I've managed to avoid learning anything real about hockey in years, and I've been so involved with hockey, so I'm really looking forward to this. This is what I needed to happen. I will never be able to make it out to a rank at nine o'clock on a Sunday to learn how to play adult hockey. So I'm looking forward to trying this out. Awesome. Christina? I'm Christina. I um, uh, am an Arizona native. I was born and raised in Scottsdale. And uh, I grew up figure skating and recently became a hockey coach for our Mike's team for the Kachinas. Um, but I'm still developing all my skills with hockey and I'm really excited to, to dive way more into stick handling and technique and all that good stuff. So, yeah. Awesome. Uh, Jessica? Hi, um, I'm actually from North Carolina. I saw a post about this on Twitter and I was like, yeah, I want to do this. Um, I I've heard of North Carolina. One of my best friends well, was there. Home of the Carolina Hurricanes. Um, oh. Yeah, so uh, I decided I was going to learn to skate so that I could play hockey last summer and um, trying to learn to skate at 36 is terrifying. I actually fell <laughs> and chipped off a part of my elbow so I couldn't straighten it out for like six months it was horrible um a little terrifying but uh <laughs> hockey seems really fun I still have no idea if I really am more comfortable left-handed or right-handed I'm a mess so <laughs> I'm super excited to do this in the comfort of my own home where you guys don't know me so if I look like an idiot nobody cares that's my story. love it love it uh Katie Um, I live in Arizona, originally from Michigan. I kind of married into hockey. My husband's been playing his whole life, so I was by default <laughs> became into hockey, but I don't play and I know just enough to follow the game. And then my daughter plays for the Katinas program. So kind of, I need to learn. <laughs> awesome. Uh, Sarah? And man and with man. Sarah? <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is Nick. Um, so I too married into hockey. He's been playing forever and I just don't want him to teach me. I want to learn from <laughs> you know, a group that like, I don't really know, but, um, I'm really excited because every time we go to a hockey game, I'm always like, I wish we had adult hockey. That'd be so cool. And I want to learn. And so, um, yeah, I'm really, really excited to play, but did I say we're from Arizona, sorry. We're from Peoria. Yeah. So, Go Yotes. Yeah. yeah, so wow. I'm really excited, and he's like, I'll be your backup coach. So like, <laughs> yeah. But yeah, I'm really excited to start and be a total noob. Awesome. Well, very cool. Um, then, Kristen, you're uh, in Whitefish, but anything else you want to share? Um, I'm actually um, from Minnesota most of my life and grew up um, playing hockey, playing with the boys, but I'm not 13 anymore. So I need to, yeah, basically relearn, I think. And I have two boys, um, 12 and eight, that are hockey heads. And I'd like to be able to get out. Um, I can skate, but not fantastic. So I'm just looking forward to doing this. And plus I wanna get on into the Women's Association League up here too. Awesome. How many of you guys by raise of hands have um, like inline skates or synthetic ice or just like a way to skate away from the rink? Okay. I, I just, the reason I ask is because that's one of the ones where I don't want to make it mandatory, but we can definitely do some additional skating stuff um, to where people can learn more specifically about skating um, away from the rink. Uh, Ashley? Hi there, sorry I joined late. Um, so I'm from Los Angeles on the west side. A uh, Penns fan since I was five because Yager had pretty hair. They also <laughs> won the cup that year that helped. Um, I was supposed to start a learn to skate program at the Toyota Sports Performance Center two weeks ago on the 12th, but alas. Um, I've skated on ice once before on a cruise ship in the middle of the Caribbean, but uh, I have inline skates, I bought them last week, but um, I'm now 34 and I'm much higher off the ground than I was when I was nine so I'm kind of relearning how to skate and that whole thing um but yeah so I know like about hockey because I was a sports writer um but I want to actually you know do a league or something and, and play because uh 
you know, it would be a hell of a lot of fun. And a lot of, a lot of my friends, um, male friends do it. So I want to do it too. Awesome. Love it. Jonna. Hi, I'm from, uh, I grew up in California. I live in Massachusetts now. And um, I have three kids that all decided to play hockey um, kind of a little bit later. Um, they started playing. I guess everybody here plays from when like they're two years old. <laughs> and on. So, um, but I just learned a little bit by watching what they're doing and it just seemed like so much fun. So um, there's actually a ladies team here that I joined this year and it got cut short because of the pandemic, but I just fell in love with it. And I want to go back as sharp as I can and try to pick up whatever, whatever I can. It's just cool. I love it. That's awesome. Um, oh man, I can't see the names in the bottom of the screen. Hang on. Oh, Jennifer Grady. Hi, friend. Hi. So my daughter plays. I'm in Washington State. Um, my daughter plays for the Washington Wild. And um, I have watched her for years, just fall in love with this game. And it's been such an amazing game. It's taken us to amazing places. And a bunch of the moms got together and we kind of started skating and like they put a woman's program together and we got knee deep in it and then Corona. So um, I was like, this will be great. This will be fun. And uh, a bunch of familiar, you know, people that, you know, it'll be uh, a bunch of women getting together, same struggles, um, doing something we love. So Awesome. I do love that we are like very female heavy. Hopefully we don't scare all the men away. I think they just didn't want to get on the call, but they, they signed up. They, they did the RSVP. Um, Lisa. Okay. So um, I'm originally from Chicago. Uh, and when I was a kid in the seventies, I begged to play hockey and was told that I couldn't because I was a girl and girls didn't play hockey. And so I skated for about two years and then got bored with figure skating and, um, fast forward 40 years. And when I was 48, I got on the ice and started playing hockey. So I'm now 51. And, but it, it, I just, any opportunity I can get to improve my skills is worth it to me. So, um, time away from the ice is time when you aren't learning and, and, um, you know, so I look forward to this opportunity. I think it'll be great. Awesome. Are you still in Chicago? Oh, no, I'm sorry. I, I, uh, I live in Alameda, California now. Okay, cool. So I train in Oakland. Awesome. And then, uh, Jennifer Silber. Oh, she doesn't have audio. That's okay. Where are you uh, located, Jennifer? Alexandria, Virginia. Awesome. Very cool. Well, that's good to know. Um, I kind of want to get an idea of what my location distribution is going to be because like we said, like Rachel said, we don't want to be doing lessons and whatnot at 10 o'clock at night. So got to try being more on the West Coast to be respectful of everybody across the country. But this is this is fantastic that we've got so many people from so many places. So um, did anybody else have any additional comments or questions or concerns? Is anybody afraid of anything? Are we all feeling good and ready to roll? Awesome, good. Um, well, I will send this out and then um, I'll also make sure to send out um, the RSVP link. That's, I think, still what I'm gonna use um, for any additional people that want to get involved or get more info. So um, if you already, I'll resend out that link if you wanna share it with anybody, um, or if you still have the original one that you filled out, you can share that with additional people as well. Um, and then I'll send out this recording. So if you wanna share that with um, anybody, we'll be able to do so. And then uh, we'll have more info coming out soon for that June 5th registration day. I'm super excited, you guys. This is gonna be a ton of fun. It's nice to see everybody's faces. So. All right, anything else? Good? Awesome. All right, well, you guys have a wonderful night and thank you for uh, tuning in. I really appreciate it. And I will see you all soon. 
Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you guys. See you later. Thank you. Take care. Thank you. Super stoked. Take care, guys.